You may be wondering how to make a nested dropdown with an image background that looks a little bit something like this as you are dropping down your question, it's growing the background image behind it. So as you close them out, you can start to see it shrink as well. All right, let's go build it from scratch. So as you can see, we have a frequently asked questions um, model set up. So, you know, each question and answer, it's going to be in its own canvas and there's going to be a transparent background image behind it. Okay, so first up, because this is a background image um, that's going to be a lighter transparency, we're going to want to make sure that we have a dark a dark page background to start. Okay, so this first canvas is going to be your background image because everything you put under it is going to stack on top of it. And then if you have canvases that you want to scroll on top, it will be set to a higher Z index to kind of account for going over that image. So you, for this background image, because you're going to have content on top of it, you're going to want to make sure that it's, you know, kind of not busy. Um, it has, you know, some good kind of textures versus main images. And that's not to say that you cannot do, you know, a busy image. Um, it's just going to be a little bit more legible if you use something a little bit um, kind of texturally balanced. Um, so this one we're going to want also to have a um, opacity. So I want it to be a little bit lighter, not that dark, um, just so that way whenever you're reading content you can kind of see over top of that. Um, and this one is also going to be set at one pixel um, just because we don't necessarily want the whole content to be taken up by the image. We want it to be taken up by the facts and questions. So we're going to make sure that that is one pixel. And I also just like to do this for the desktop or I'm sorry, the mobile, um, just to have an image placeholder to kind of break up this content that's coming next. Um, and because you want it to have a majority of the screen, um, this will also be adjusted as we're filling in your questions and answers. Okay, so now we're going to want to make a header for our facts and questions. So let's add a blank canvas. Um, and now because you're adding a new canvas, it's going to add your color palette 8. But we want every single canvas to be transparent so that way it's showing our background image. Okay, so let me just go ahead and... Um, pull my header and this can say anything you want if you don't want to do questions um, you can do service based um, whatever you choose okay so for the canvas background I am NOT going to choose to inherit the desktop view um, to the mobile so I am going to let's see break it and make this just a standard, you know, white block, colored block, whatever. Um, I just don't want the image to kind of traverse down the mobile page just because mobile generally takes up a lot more space and your image at that point just gets stretched and it looks weird. Um, so we're just going to go ahead and leave that alone. So now that we have them broken, um, I'm just going to go ahead and size my facts and questions header to this. And now we're going to start to build out our questions. So I'm going to add a blank canvas. And this also will need to be transparent. So however, you know, long your canvas is, it will grow. Okay, so this one, let's have a background, a question background. And you will also want to break the question and the answer when it comes, um, you'll want to break those backgrounds as well. So I'm going to set that to a color um, and we'll just make this, you know, separate color. Okay, so now that I have my question background, let's go ahead and add in the question and element if you want it. Um, so 
You know, this will be question here. Question here. <laughs> and then I'm going to want to add a plus or a arrow icon just so that way they know that this is a drop down. All right, we'll make this black. Let's go ahead and let's do a plus for this one. All right. So now I want to set my click action on these to kind of tell this window um, that it's going to need to open a question or an answer. So to start, um, I want to make sure that I'm building the base accordingly um, to duplicating this. So um, I'm going to want to make sure that I'm setting spell question. That would be awesome. And then dash one. So now every time I duplicate this block, it's going to be dash two, dash three, so on, so forth. Um, and I want this to be placed over so that way when they when we set our click action, no matter if they pick the plus or the question, it's going to drop that down. Okay, so we're just gonna style it for mobile. Okay. Okay, so now that we have our question styled, I'm gonna go ahead and make another blank canvas and this is going to be answer one. So you're also gonna to wanna to set this to transparent. I want to break that on mobile and make sure that's my background color as well. Okay, so this one, I want the answer to be overlaying the image. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to just copy and paste this um, and then answer. So you get the point that this is your answer block. Okay. And this is going to be want to set to white. So that way, you know, your information kind of shows up over top of the image. Um, okay. All right. So this is your answer. But we obviously want this one hidden on, you know, when you're viewing the page, we only want the question shown. And then when you click the question drop down, it's going to show your nested answer. Okay, so you're going to want to set this canvas to hidden to start. And I'm going to do this also for the mobile. Um, hidden to start. And then we're going to go back to question one. And I'm going to select the title and do click actions. I want to show answer one. So this is kind of important as you're kind of like duplicating these, um, the base of them is already set up so that way you can quickly kind of pop in your basic question. You can pop in your answer. Um, and then let's also take this icon and then make a close icon. So I'm going to make this white and I'm going to do minus. And I want to set this to have a click action to hide this canvas. Okay. So now we're able to kind of start building out the remaining questions. But first I want to go ahead and give it a little test and kind of see, is it functioning the way I want before I start duplicating them? Okay. So you'll notice that kind of our image isn't spanning, but it is taking up the place of our content. So I'm just going to go ahead and go to this block and make sure your image is also spanning the full width. And I'm going to make the page um, a darker color. Sometimes they're hard to grasp. All right, we'll do 60. Okay, so let's go ahead and preview it. Okay, looks good. It's doing what I want. Let's go ahead and preview on mobile as well. Okay, perfect. So I noticed that when I clicked the plus, it didn't chop up. It's because I don't have my whole question overlaying. And this can be a little bit tricky if you have a longer question, then you would just go ahead and um, 
make a second layer or a second line. Okay, so now that I know it functions properly, um, all of my buttons work, and now I'm ready to duplicate it. So now every time I duplicate this, um, it's going to kind of keep the settings as answer one. So I like to go ahead and kind of um, duplicate all of my questions first because I already know I'm gonna have six questions or four questions. Um, it's just kind of easier to go in a row. So we'll just go four and I'm gonna put my answer back up here and then I'm gonna duplicate this as many times as I did the question. So we're gonna go ahead and do it four times. And I'm gonna just drag my answers under the appropriate questions. So now you should have a question one, answer one, question two, answer two, so on, so forth. You get the point. Um, so now we'll just wanna go ahead and set the new question click actions to the, the correct answer blocks. So you'll just select those um, and then just, you can quickly you know, go down the line and change them this way. And because we kind of like predetermined, like, yes, this is going to be linked to a answer canvas, um, we kind of just foreshadowed that we would need those. Um, okay, so now we have all of the questions set up. Um, when you click them, it's dropping down the correct answers. Um, that's good. So we're obviously going to want a bumper down here because once it's, you know, small. But now you'll notice that our image isn't taking up the full answer canvases. So this is kind of like something you'll wanna go back to do. So you'll wanna go back to your image canvas, select your image, and we're going to make this the full, the full height of all of your questions and your answers. Um, and because I know I'm gonna put a bumper on it, let me just go ahead and drag it down a little bit more. And let's add a blank canvas. This one is also going to be transparent. Okay. And it's just dependent on how big you want your bumper to be. Um, as long as your image is now um, kind of filling in that bumper as well. So it's kind of like you're predetermining it to kind of fit those questions and answer content. Um, so like if this one had, you know, kind of a longer answer, um, this one had a longer answer, you're just gonna wanna go ahead and go back to that, that image canvas and kind of account for that extra spacing. And if you're doing this for a template, you'll obviously, probably want to do an informational tutorial or some kind of written tutorial so that way they know like, okay, well, this is where I changed my image and this is how I adjust the spacing. So now once we preview it, you will see that the image is taking up the full height of the headline, each question, and even this bumper right here because it's set to a transparent. And then when we drop down our answers, it will continue to grow. Now, if you want to add in more content below it, you will just want to make sure that this is set um, to have a background layer. Um, let's go ahead and add in, oops, let's add in some remaining content. So if I were to, um, have this remaining content set to transparent, um, then you'll notice that we're also still able to see um, that image behind our content. And we don't want that. So um, if you just make sure that your background layer is set to um, white or another color, you won't kind of get that image overlapping at all. And then, you know, it's still growing with all of that content. It's just being cut off by, you know, either a higher stacking order or a full background. Hope that helps.